Hey guys, it's Andy here. Uh, this video I'm going to be explaining some of the changes I did to my power wall and speaking about my BMS a tiny bit. Uh, kind of getting ready for an actual review of this thing since there were a whole bunch of files and some strange things with the Android APK file to run the Bluetooth on your phone. Uh, so getting that ready is a bit of annoying, but I just want to make a really quick messy video going over some of the changes I've made to my BMS, or, or to the entire system actually. Uh, so the first one is, is uh, really easy, the cell meter. I finally hooked it up uh, since the last year. I've technically taken a break for a year now from doing any of this work. Uh, so I finally got this hooked up. Works great, love it. Uh, makes everything much easier. You can cycle through each cell's voltage, well I call it every column's voltage would be a better way of describing it for my system. So, let's see. So 1S, see, so that's this one here, this column here, and then the second column, and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth. You see the percentage charged up, it seems to have quite a large jump but it's actually not that bad. So uh, right now the voltage is 28.8, .8, and the reason why is uh, I have it set so the BMS only lets it charge up to 29.2, or I think just 29. So right now it's um, balancing, it's being quite conservative. And the highest is 0.15, lowest is 0 0.07, and the difference is 0 0.07, uh, volts, which is pretty good. Uh, it's not terrible at all. And let's see, so we're at like 91%. So I feel safe at this, and in the other video I just uh, released, um, I'm going to have to reorganize all of my cells based off milliamp hours, so I'm going to do a separate video speaking about that. We'll do some experimentation and find out what's going on. Uh, in terms of this guy, I've never had any problem. It's not very accurate at low amperage, although it's doing okay right now. Let's see what it jumps up to. Put a tiny bit more load. Yeah, that jumps up. we got three amps right now. Turn off these lights. And we've only got 1.6, 1.5. So that's pretty good. Um, all I was doing was doubling how many lights are running off it. And you can see my previous videos talking about the... Uh, direct DC voltage lights and they're controlled by this controller up here. You can see it's even got a dimmer so you can check out that video. Really easy to make. It's Technically it's even cheaper than well yeah it's exponentially cheaper to do this system than it is to run normal light bulbs which is kind of strange but it's been running great for the past year. None of the lights are, uh, none of these LED lights are losing any of their um, brightness or lumens, so super happy about that. So moving up here to the MPP, MPPT charge controller, and uh, I even have a grid tie charge controller here. That's pretty good. Works really well. Very low amperage, like 1.5 amps input, 5 amps. So it charges up at a rate of 5 amps. That's okay. I put it on a double switch. So I'll show you. So first it's on solar. If I press up, it's on solar. The uh, MPPT. Yeah. So you can see the solar panels only at like 30 volts, 32 volts. And yeah, it's not going to put out any uh, power because uh, it's getting a little dark out now and in the fall time we're getting a lot of cloud cover. So not very reliable, especially it's only one solar panel. That's at like uh, max 36 volts. I think operating it's like um, open, it's 36, 34 on load volts and then wattage it can get a max of like 220 watts which is pretty good on a nice sunny day and yeah works fine and then the switch here if I put it to the middle then it's completely disconnected um, this isn't connected and the solar charge controller isn't connected and then when I press it down then this thing starts up and it starts charging and you'll be able to see it right here watch 
turn off again, you see the voltage drop and the amperage go up because the um, grid tie charge controller or charger was um, supplying the amperage to the light bulbs. So do it again. And it goes down to zero because now it's charging the, pa the um, power wall and it's supplying voltage to this uh, buck converter. Actually it's uh, bypassed right now. I'm going straight to the light bulbs which are right here. So yeah, works pretty good. Now we'll uh, move on to uh, the BMS. Yeah, I think that's important. All right, we'll turn off that. All right, so I've been testing this BMS for a while now. I'm quite happy with it. Uh, the APK file for Android was a little difficult to get a hold of to install the application. The one on the Android store doesn't function at all. It's complete garbage, unfortunately. Uh, who knows, maybe someone else has had luck. But anyways, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, a year ago, I paid $64 for it, $50 US. as 60 amp discharge, 60 amp charge. Um, the rest doesn't really matter much. It has really low balancing, 60 milliamps. Like a lot of other ones are max 100 milliamps. I just ordered another one. Uh, for the new power wall that I'm building and it does 100 milliamps and it's um, rated like this rating is definitely fake but anyways it's rated at um, 320 amp discharge and then 60 amp charge which is kind of funny but anyways um, so I, I just ordered it as like $102 or $104 comes with a screen or some stuff and I ordered another one of these for the next power wall the next one that I'll start building, it's not going to have uh, the charger bolt or the on-off switch, and it's not going to have this unit here. Uh, it's I don't. It was nice. This thing's kind of nice having a little cigarette lighter system with an on-off switch. So yeah, turn off the lights since the whole system's on cigarette lighter. But I mean, it's not really necessary. I think it's a lot of extra work for for no reason. Um, it's better to have a buck converter uh, but because of the way I'm doing it, I'm bypassing because since the buck converter in, uh, introduces losses so uh, I try to be as streamlined as possible but these units they can handle they can handle the 29 volts but it uh, kills them a lot faster. Like they only last about six months to eight months before they completely get um, burnt out, unfortunately. Uh, I've had quite a few of them burn out. Uh, yeah, like uh, this one here was the last one to burn out. And that was because it was running at 29 volts or on average 20 volts. I'm going to also change it up so I'm gonna uh, have the sides, the two sides won't change because they're not fused, but all of these lines, I'm going to make a, a main bus bar out of just 214 wire, and then fuse to the bus bar for each one of these. So here, 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 here. I'll have a main 214, um, whatever that gauge is, wire. And I'll be fusing using this 30 AWG Remington. It's pretty cheap stuff. It works perfect as a fuse. I've got this guy ready to go. And I've got the um, the holder for when I'm soldering all of the uh, battery holders. And I've got my wooden, wooden piece ready. I've got a few other wooden pieces over there. I've already got the um, shunt and amp meter. Uh, I've got one of these on order. It's black though. This guy right here has been running great. I even added a um, USB charger on it just just for the hell of it. Just a slow USB charger, I guess. Uh, something off of an old laptop, but the rest of it's been running great, no issues. When it comes to any of these BMSs, any of them that look even remotely like this one, all of them come from China, they all have the same controller. There is one strange trick to them uh, in order to get them up and running. For some strange reason, uh, especially the first time you do it, 
what you have to do is first you have to plug this guy in, uh, the main header for you know sensing all the different battery voltages. You plug it in, then you turn on the breaker for the negative, then you turn on the breaker for the positive. You have to do it in that order, otherwise the BMS will never engage, which is very strange. The light will come on, but nothing will happen. So that's incredibly important. Uh, make sure you do that first. So one, negative, then positive. Okay. Uh, other than that, I haven't had any problems with it. I'll make a video uh, showing the EPK file and some of the other strange stuff going on, you know, with Chinese stuff, there's always something odd, but I've ordered a much better one, and I'll test and review it as well. So it should be quite interesting, and um, yeah, I, I think that's about it. So let me know what you think. Uh, you know, comments are always appreciated, and I hope you have a great Halloween weekend. Thanks, guys. Bye.